What is up nerdy chicks, hope you're having an amazing day and welcome to Nerdy Nails. Now it's really important when you get into nail art and nails in general to have a good nail care routine. So in today's video I'm going to show you my nail care routine. So hope you guys enjoy and you learn something useful that will benefit your nails in the long run. So let's dive into today's video. So let's start with my nails before I did any nail care. And from afar, they don't actually look too bad. Some of you may be thinking they don't need any care at the moment, but you'll be wrong because when you take a closer look, they are a little bit manky and I definitely need to do a bit of TLC to them. Even my camera knows they're a bit manky because it can't even focus on them. So first things first, we need to grab some nail polish remover and just remove any excess nail polish we have on our nails. We really want to do a deep clean and remove all the nail polish from the sides and even underneath our nails as well. You really want to get that nail polish into all the nooks and crannies on your nail. We want a proper deep clean. Now that our nails are all nice and clean and tidy, we now need to look for hangnails. What are hangnails? Well, they are those part of dead skin that hang on the side of your nails sometimes. They tend to happen if your nails are on the drier side. All you need to do is get some cuticle cutters and cut off the hangnails. So you can get cuticle cutters in many different versions. They all do the same job to remove hangnails. It just depends on which one you find the most comfortable to work with. For this video, I'm going to use the stainless steel ones. All you need to do is push the skin away from the hangnail and use the cuticle cutter to snip it away. Just watch out that you don't catch your skin like I did here when trying to cut a hangnail off. Also, most importantly, don't use cuticle cutters to cut your cuticles, just use them to remove hangnails, but I will go into more detail later regarding this. Now that we removed all the hangnails, we are going to cut and file our nails. Now I'm going to cut my nails down a bit as there's been some nail damage over the last couple of weeks with my nails. As you can see on the side of my nails, some of them have chipped away. This has happened as the nail polish in the corner of my nails tends to chip first and I didn't reapply nail polish onto the corner of my nails so they've been left into the environment and with the natural effects of wear and tear to day-to-day -day life they've become damaged and chipped away so it's really important guys if you see a chip in your nail polish to remove the nail polish and reapply so your nails are not left to the elements and the day-to-day -day life of wear and tear as if you do they'll become damaged and it will leave to a nail break. Since my nails are long I'm going to use nail clippers to remove the damaged parts. Now when it comes to using nail clippers you don't want to press vertically and then push them down as this could cut more than you intended to and it also causes a lot of strain onto your nail which will lead to them breaking even more. You just want to cut them three times in different angles to remove the length. You want to snip on an angle on the left and right side of the nail and then in the centre you just want to snip off the excess. If you just want to trim your nails slightly down then I recommend to file them down instead as using nail clippers for slight trims could lead to cutting more than you intended off or it could just give extra strain to the nail leading to a potential nail break. Once you have trimmed your nails, we then want to grab our nail file to shape your nails. There's so many different types of nail files out there. I highly recommend to have a mixture of nail files in your collection, but most importantly, I recommend that you need to have glass files in your collection. They're definitely the best in the business. There's many different versions of glass files out there. I tend to find the rougher the file, they are better for filing down your nails and the smoother the file, they are better to use to shape your nails. The smoother ones tend to be crystal nail files and the rough ones you can get 
anywhere. Glass nail files you can pretty much find anywhere. You can find in drugstores, in cosmetic shops. They are pretty easy to find. But for the smooth ones, you have to do a little bit more hunting around. I really recommend the Leighton Denny nail files. They are really good for shaping. They are slightly on the expensive side as they do vary from 15 to 25 pounds. But trust me guys, they are well worth saving your money. They are so good. And they also say they have a 25 year guarantee. So if you look after them, you will have this nail file for a long time before it goes dull. Now, some of you may think Leighton Denny has sponsored this video, but they haven't. I'm actually just giving them their praise as it's definitely one of the best nail files I have ever used and it's been a huge game changer. I can't go back to any other type of nail file for shaping. They are definitely one of the best nail files out there. But Leighton Denny, if you ever want to do a sponsored deal with me, I am ready when you are. Anyway, enough drooling over nail files. Now how to file, what you want to do is you don't want to seesaw the file. So you don't want to go back and forth as this could lead to micro tears causing nail breaks down the road, which we do not want. You want to stick to the same direction from corner to center. And then you want to go in the other direction on the other side of your nail. If you stick to the same direction throughout the nail it feels like you're going against the grain on the nail which we do not want because it just doesn't feel right and most importantly you want to take your time when it comes to filing and shaping your nails as you don't want to go too fast because you want to make sure you shape it to the correct style you would like and most importantly we're not starting a campfire here so take your time on getting the shape right for your nails so the shape you want to do, you can do whichever design you like. For me, I tend to go for a scroval shape for my nails, but do the shape whichever you find that best suits your nails. And once we've done the main shaping for our nails, what you want to do as well with the nail file, you just want to flick it underneath your nail just to remove any excess nail shards that hadn't been completely removed when filing. As you can see we have some excess nail shards that didn't get removed with the file and we can just use our fan brush to sweep it away. You can also buff your nails if you wish but I'm going to make a sole video on buffering as I know some people have a mixed opinion on buffering so it definitely deserves a video on its own. Once you have filed your nails and you're happy with the shape and length you desire, we are then going to push back our cuticles. Now the biggest word here is push. You do not want to use cuticle cutters to cut your cuticles. That is a big no-no. If you use cuticle cutters to cut your cuticles, it's going to turn into a huge bloody mess and it could also lead to an increased chance of infection. I have a really good example here. This is my friend's nails. She used to use cuticle cutters all the time to cut her cuticles. I will admit she has got better over time as I have taken her out of the darkness and showed her the light of proper nail care but she does sometimes go back to her old habits here where she has used cuticle cutters to cut her cuticles and it has led to her cutting them and causing a huge bloody mess. So don't be like my friend here, don't cut them. We wanna push our cuticles back. Now how we do this, you wanna get some cuticle eraser gel and you wanna apply this around the cuticle area. You wanna leave it on there for a couple of minutes and then you want to grab your cuticle pusher and then we are just going to push our cuticles back. Once pushed back, we are then just going to remove the excess gel and apply some cuticle oil around the skin and cuticle area. Now, cuticle oil comes in many different forms. You can get droppers, you can get pens. At the end of the day, they all do the same job. So just find the one that you feel most comfortable to use and use that on your cuticles and the skin around it. Applying cuticle oil is really important as it just keeps your cuticles and skin hydrated 
and this is really good since it will reduce the chances of developing hang nails and will just leave your nails to be a lot more healthier so it's really important to keep your nails and cuticles hydrated now onto the final part where we're just going to apply some nail polish to seal and protect our nails so first things first you want to apply a base coat to protect your natural nail and also set a base for any future polish to go on top of your nail now if you're in a job or school where you can't wear nail polish then what you need to do instead is just apply a clear coat polish instead as this will still protect your nails and also keep them safe and you won't get in trouble with your school or company as a lot of people do ask me how to grow their nails and to most guys the biggest secret is just keep having nail polish on your nails as the daily wear and tear of life causes so much damage to your natural nails but just having some polish on top will protect them so the biggest advice to help with nail growth is just always have nail polish on and if you're in an environment where you can't wear coloured nail polish just wear clear polish and you'll still get that nail growth happening and once we've applied our clear coat we are then just going to apply a top coat to really make them shine for me personally, I really like Barry M's quick dry top coat. It's definitely the best quick dry top coat on the drugstore market. Personally, avoid two in one base and top coat polishes as they never really work that well. The only time I would class them as okay to use is if you wanna do some traveling and you wanna bring some nail polish with you, but you don't wanna bring thousands of nail polish then using the two-in-one base and top coat is the only time I find it acceptable to use these polishes but in general just avoid them and once your nails have dried we are then just going to apply some hand cream to keep our hands hydrated and yes I did buy this hand cream just because it has Pikachu on I am a sucker for branding okay but there you guys have it, that is my nail care routine and if you follow these tips guys you will be keeping your nails and hands healthy and it will also lead to nail growth over time. If you have enjoyed today's video then please leave it a like. If there's any other nail art advice or any nail art tutorials you want to see on this channel then please leave a comment down below and if you also learned something new then please subscribe so you don't miss any nail art videos and it also helps the channel hugely and just remember guys keep being awesome keep being amazing and i will see you in the next nail art video bye